Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management and we are lenders in Southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff and sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Wendy donates 30 minutes per person every Wednesday uh, to talk about anything real estate. So she's, how, how far are you booked up now? You're in May, right? I'm uh, April. Let's see. Yes, I have one on May 1st, but I do have a, a couple of, of appointments left for the 27th of Sweet. April. Well, here's Tell the calendar you know. link. Uh, it's over there in the chat box as well. Just click it on. Uh, that's a nice reminder. We have a chat box. <laughs> so if you have any questions <laughs> during our show, um, just type it over there in the chat side. If you're viewing us from other platforms, it may be underneath the screen, not to the right side of the screen. So, um, Wendy and I have a couple of short-term rentals together. Uh, Wendy has most of them on her own, but, uh, when we got together on one in Florida, cause we typically don't do, uh, vacation, sort of areas. Right. Right. Um, I was a little worried about insurance because this property is a single wide mobile home with a permanent Florida room and it's on a canal and we have uh, kayaks that people can use and that adds what liability. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we wanted to make sure that we had the proper insurance. That's right. I well, the other thing too is the, the rent loss is completely different for yeah. short-term rental than it would be if it were a long-term lease. I mean, it's, it's a, it's there, there's a lot of different liabilities that you have that you need to have proper coverage for, for sure. Absolutely. And speaking of proper coverage, it is our pleasure <laughs> to bring on Nick Massey <laughs> of proper insurance. Thank you so much for joining us, Nick. How's it going? Uh, excellent. Thank you. What a great idea for a name. That's right. <laughs> we hit the nail right on the head. Got, got to have that proper coverage. So listen, I was blown away when I found that I could get that type of coverage on a single wide mobile home. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, there's a lot of people that are doing tiny homes and uh, what is it? What are those? Tent Tree homes? houses, Yurt, yurts, yurts yeah, and stuff. Yeah. glamping. Um, do you do glamping too? Uh, depends on the situation, but yeah. the yurts, the tree houses, tiny homes, you know, manufactured homes to large mansions all across the U.S. We'll, we'll look at and try to insure just about anything as long as it's a short-term vacation rental property. That's awesome. That's sweet. Um, I do have a, a question right off the bat for you and it's about it being a business. What? I'm laughing because your computer next door is so loud that I can hear our show about three minutes. Behind. I don't know why it's even on in there. <laughs> anyway, um, what the heck was I going to ask? I have no idea. I just had to giggle. All right. about it. Uh, your, your short term, <laughs> short term rental being a business is yeah. it classified as a business and, and how does the uh, insurance coverage, uh, why is it different for that? So it, the classification of a business at a property starts with the definition in the insurance contract. So you and I may have a disagreement on whether or not my Airbnb or Verbo rental is a business and that's all, it's all fine and dandy. But when the standardized insurance language out there says anything that you get compensated for greater than $2,000 a year is considered a business then we need to rely on the insurance contract and how they define it. And, and the biggest reason for that is if you have the wrong insurance policy and they're defining this activity as a business and has a business activity exclusion, you have no coverage, um, no liability protection, no property protection, and everything you've put all your blood, sweat and money into this asset to try and get an ROI. And God forbid, if somebody vandalizes the home or, 
um, slips and falls and has a liability incident, now that contract is defining this as a business activity and you have no coverage. So, so give us an idea of, of some of the unusual things that would be covered, like, you know, we love stories, examples, <laughs> you know, just like the commercial on, who is it that does the commercial? State Farm. State Farm. Yeah. <laughs> So, Give us an example of some of the unusual things. Yeah, I mean, we we see and hear about a lot of crazy stuff at vacation rentals. Um, bed bugs is one that comes up far too often. And we're one of the only companies, we're the first company to actually come out with bed bug coverage um, for property remediation as well as liability. And then some of our competitors have, you know, duplicated, of course, but we were first to market. Um, so that's that's one that that comes up that's on on kind <laughs> you don't want that in your property um, <laughs> one of the craziest stories i have from one of my actual clients here is uh, a small cabin in washington state two bedroom cabin um, the gentleman who was our insured uh, craftsman built like he built this thing by hand um, wow. he builds custom furniture and cabinetry so everything in this house this little cabin of his was just you know, to the, to the nines, if you will, for woodwork. And he had some guests show up on a Friday night and his neighbor called him and said they were getting kind of loud. And so he went through the process with Airbnb to cancel the reservation and get them kicked out, um, which Airbnb did. But then these people came back the next day, the next evening with about 200 other people and oh caused about $105,000 worth of damage to this little two bedroom, two and a half bedroom cabin. Oh, um, there's a couple of things with that. Number one, there's way too many folks out there who have a false security through Airbnb's air cover. It's great that it's there, but it's not really insurance. Um, they cancel the booking. Airbnb only covers you when the property is a booking. So oh, wow. that was no, no help from Airbnb there because of that term. Um, additionally, we have something called property entrustment, which is a common exclusion in insurance policies, just like uh, just like the business activity exclusion. So this more or less fell under the definition of guest cause damage. Um, did they break in? Yes. Could there be an argument against the other insurance contracts out there that uh, this was forced entry to a certain extent, but there's this gray area with the Airbnb booking happening and them kind of knowing who the owner is through that. Um, and, and that's where everybody hates insurance companies because I'm sure they would have found a way to deny that. But that's where we come in and, you know, I wish we could be like State Farm flying in with a cape. Yay! <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, 100, $105,000 in damage and that included wow. loss of income as well because you obviously can't rent out the property while you're going through that, that big, huge repair. Um, some of the other stuff that we've seen that isn't necessarily odd or crazy, well, there was one really odd one. Um, <laughs> So pet friendly properties are very popular um, and a lot of guests out there will kind of, um, you know, subdue the pet or the size of the pet that they're bringing to the property. And in this particular case, what ended up happening was the guest brought three pigs to the home and uh, didn't take them outside. And so they made a huge mess inside the home for the four or five days they stayed there. Um, that was probably one of the oddest ones for sure. I think. <laughs> um, that is on that. so many questions. So many questions. Yeah. Yeah. One, like, did you fly with the pigs or did you drive with them? Like, what is your car? Why do you, have, do you have, yeah. like one pig might be like, oh, okay, whatever, like a pet pig, but three of them is kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, you just have to wonder about people, <laughs> you know, it was funny, uh, cause you reminded me, I was in the airport last night and one of the police dogs, the sniffing dog was making a beeline for the people that were getting off of my plane. I was waiting for a friend of mine to get off and the, the officer is holding the dog back as it's making a beeline. Now it didn't stop at the people. It went right to the door that says pet relief area. So <laughs> it knew where to go. <laughs> and it's, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. Not so much with the pig. <laughs> well, 
one of the things that I appreciated with your company when I was applying for the insurance is the questionnaires that you have on there about uh, the different things that uh, you offer with your short-term rental, the like amenities. bicycles and, uh, you know, in, in this case, kayaks, because, you know, our, our place is right on a, a saltwater canal and I do provide kayaks, but you have a checklist for, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, amenities. I, I'm talking about the, uh, with a bicycle, like do you have helmets? Um, the safety equipment uh, that goes Yeah, like that. your, uh, what am I, flotation oh, yes. devices. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, sorry, it was a long trip last night. <laughs> but, you know, those, those are things that a lot of people don't think about having. And who is there to check uh, every time a guest checks out uh, to make sure that those items are still there uh, mm -hmm. for the next guests that come up? And, and that's very beneficial to the person that's having the uh, short-term rental that, that may not be uh, thinking aware about, about that. It. Yeah. yeah. It's a great little checklist to have. Yeah. We, most of our clients are new to the space, right? They're not, I mean, a lot of our clients have been doing this for a few years, but for the most part, we're dealing with folks who've been in it for less than a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so one important thing to always remember when you're dealing with insurance is this, the, the term is, is underwriting. If right. the company doesn't underwrite for it, they're probably not going to cover it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need to be asking yourself, like, are they asking about my online listing with Airbnb, VRBO, my property manager, my own personal website? You know, how do they know exactly what I'm doing? How does this insurance underwriter, not the agent you're dealing with, but the actual underwriter who pays the claims, how do they know what they're insuring? Because most of the time when you call a retail agent, and we'll just, I'll just throw State Farm on the bus. Um, you call <laughs> the State Farm agent, there's, there's a million State Farm agents around the U.S. State Farm's based out of Illinois. They send an application to the office in Illinois for a single family house on a canal in Florida, right? And they say, great, we'll insure it for 800 bucks a year, right? They have no idea what's going on with this property. They sure. think it's a residential residence and good to go. Fine. Is it owner occupied? Is it tenant occupied? Is there vacancies? Is there business activities happening there? Is there liability or amenities that can take the guest off premises and name you in a lawsuit? So these are all things that we check for. And this is you know, where our specialty comes in, where nobody else in, in the marketplace is asking these types of questions and underwriting these type of properties in this way. And so the common, the thing you have to kind of keep in your mind as you're, as you're going through the insurance process is, you know, are they asking me the questions about the amenities? Am I asking the agent about the amenities I want to offer? Hey, I want to, I want to offer bicycles. I'm on Venice Beach in California. And we want bicycles to be part of our, our vacation rental. Am I covered for that? Um, I want to be pet friendly. Do I have any breed limitations? Is there any animal pet liability limitations? Um, I want to offer a hot tub or a sauna or a swimming pool, you know, things like that. And again, if you're not asking these questions, the underwriter is not going to know or underwrite for that exposure. And they're either one, not going to charge the right amount of premium, uh, which we're not cheap because we actually cover this risk. Um, or they're just simply going to decline the risk on the front end because they want nothing to do with the exposure. So mm -hmm. it's better to, to figure it out on the front end than learn the hard way. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's kind of the biggest kickback is, is price. We live in a premium, in a premium driven world. Um, again, state farm, all state nationwide, all of them, they advertise online, uh, on the, on the Super Bowl and everything, you know, Geico say 15% for 15 minutes. We're in a, a race to the bottom in retail insurance. And when you're dealing with an investment property, like a vacation rental, you need to throw price out. Um, get, don't even think about it until you start understanding what coverages you need. Um, and I think from an investment standpoint, you got to crunch these numbers. And if the one thing in your, if the one place you're going cheap on is to try and get cheap on insurance, then you're really going to get screwed when a claim happens and you're making no money. Right? So if you're like, I have to, I have to give up an extra hundred dollars or $200 a month because I did my prospectus on this insurance policy but proper insurance is twice as much. Okay, great. You're cash flowing $150, $200 less a month. But when we go five, six, seven years down the road, you actually have to use the insurance policy. It's better to get paid $50,000 than pay $50,000 out of pocket. 
That's for sure. And that's what I think people um, have a difficult time understanding is that, you, you know, you don't want insurance until you don't have it and you need it. And um, it, it's not wasted money. So many people look at it, you know, it's not tangible. They don't see it. Um, but mm -hmm. it, especially when you're doing short term rentals and you've got people in your house that you don't really know. Um, anything could happen. I there this it's so funny right now. Everybody's Airbnb berserk. They all want to turn their long-term rentals into short-term rentals. And it's it sounds like a real sexy thing to do. And gosh, I can make three times my money. And yes, all of that is true, but there are greater risks involved to having short-term rental, not just having a great housekeeper and good, having good communication, but you know, you, you really have to, I, I, I always tell people to get online onto Facebook, some of the Facebook groups for Airbnb hosts. You want to hear some stories, get online and listen to all of yeah. that. That'll really make you question whether or not it's something that you want to do. Do you differentiate um, between a 30, 60, 90 day tenant versus a uh, short term? Like, would your coverage be different? if you're focusing on 30, 60, 90 days? We don't. So one thing when we developed the product back in 2014 that we took into consideration was removing any definition of occupancy. So that allows us to ensure the house that might double as a primary residence. You could maybe you invest in a duplex and one half is your primary, the other half is a short term. We're gonna ensure the entire structure. You don't need two policies, we cover you through and through. Um, there's the corporate lease or traveling nurse market out there, especially you know during the pandemic when all that was going on, You know the extended vacation. I'm getting out of New York City and I'm going to the Finger Lakes and I'm gonna stay there for 60 days. And so the question was with our existing clients, what, am I covered for that? Because it's no longer a short term rental. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, with our product, it is. If you don't have our product, you need to be cognizant of what the occupancy definitions are to make sure you're covered for that. And that's one thing about that's you know so great about our policy for many of these short-term rental uh, operators out there is the flexibility and in, in length of stay. So I have somebody rent my place for three days this weekend, but I get a phone call from a traveling nurse that needs to stay for 90, and I'm going to make tons of money because the hospital's paying for it. Um, and they're going to pay me, you know, above market rate anyways. Awesome. Do it. That's fantastic. Um, the only thing we're not going to insure is a traditional lease. So if you're doing a traditional six month, six month lease or a traditional 12 month lease, you're way better suited with a landlord policy, which right. is half the price and it's, it's already in the market and is built for what you need. Right. Uh, so, you know, that's the long way to answer it, but short answer is no. We don't really have a definition of length of stay for what is a short-term rental, but we remove the occupancy definition so that we can cover a multitude of different lengths of stay. Plus you have people that are renting rooms out of their own home for short term. Yeah. And that's a, that's a small, small part of the market anymore. The shared spaces. That's one mm -hmm. thing we don't um, really cater to. Um, if you are renting, if, if you have a three bedroom house and you're an empty nester and you're renting out, you live in the master and you rent out two bedrooms on Airbnb, um, the retail market. And when I say retail market, I mean the all States, the Liberty Mutuals, the nationwide, the, you know, famous, the pro football player is advertising for them on TV. Basically, <laughs> uh, they have what's called a home sharing endorsement. It's super inexpensive. And since you're sharing common space with the guests, with things get weird, you're there and can stop it from happening um, or call the cops, right? So right. when you're renting out individual rooms with shared spaces in your house, proper insurance is not the right fit, okay? You need a home sharing, pol a home owner's policy with a home sharing endorsement. It maybe costs 250 bucks a year. Um, that's a better fit for that type of exposure. Awesome. If you have that's a good info. Yeah, if you have a nine bedroom house and you live in one bedroom and rent out eight individual bedrooms, you're kind of, you're a hotel. <laughs> right, you probably, right. You should probably go look at a hotel motel type policy um, in that case. 
if you have a, let's use the same example, right? Because all you know, all all these investors, you guys are going to have different types of things. It's not all the basic single family house or condo. So I go and buy, I go and buy an old hotel in Florida. You see this a lot. So I find a motel in Florida. I get a great deal on it. I'm borrowing money from from you guys, um, doing a big renovation, and I'm making nine individual units under one roof. They have their own kitchen. They're basically nine studios. Their own kitchenette, their own bathrooms, their own means of egress. There's no shared spaces with guests. I don't have a shared pool. I don't have shared hot tubs or sauna. I'm no longer a motel or a hotel. I am basically nine apartments under one roof. Hmm. We would ensure that because there's no shared spaces. It's no longer a hotel motel type risk. There are nine individual short-term rental studios under one roof, right? Um, so that would be something we would look at. Uh, for, I would uh, think that that shared space um, since COVID is probably much smaller share of the market anyway. It is. You know, people don't want to mingle anymore <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's last last I saw, which was late 2021, was that about 12% of the U.S. listings on Airbnb were private rooms, hmm. right? So that's a very small portion of the market that's left that's just renting out a spare bedroom in their house. Right. Um, and that's how it started. Well, yeah. I, see, see, yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I see that the, uh, let's say you have a, a guest uh, apartment sort of thing, pool house kind of place or Mm -hmm. room over the garage where you're not really having a shared space. That makes yeah. a lot more sense to me than renting out rooms in your house. Because again, as the owner of the home, you never know who's going to be there. And as the person renting, you never know who's going to live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's um, and that's, that's a very common thing that we see a lot is the I'm renting the space above the garage or I turned my detached garage into an apartment and rehabbed it. Um, those are very common and, and we see that all the time, um, you know, but for the most part, I mean, again, if you're, if you're investing big dollars in a huge piece of real estate, that's going to have multiple listings on it. Um, it's going to be really tough to get insurance if there's shared elements at that property and sure. you may have to end up insuring it like a hotel and now you're, now you're playing ball with Hilton and that's not cheap insurance, right, <laughs> um, right. you know, or bed and breakfast style stuff. So. I mean, our, our target market is the, the single family home, town home, condo, cabin, um, you know, some of the oddities like the tree houses and the yurts and stuff. But, you know, a single family house that's rented to one party at a time, completely private. Um, they have the space for whatever their length of stay is going to be. That's our target market. And that's what we're seeing all these claim declinations happen all across the U.S. Is that properties like that? We weren't honest with our, our insurer and uh, they found out I'm a vacation rental after the claim and they denied the loss. Now I'm out of pocket 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand right. dollars. Um, and could be way, way more than that if it's a liability claim. Um, I mean, just to date in Florida, there's been eight pool drownings at vacation rentals. Wow. So pool safety is a big, um, it's a big thing. You gotta have depth markers. You need to have safety equipment. Um, you, everybody should check out Breezeway Safety, Justin Ford and his team over there. If you operate a vacation rental, insurance should be the last thing to hit. I mean, you need to take the safety steps first and make yeah. sure you have all the right stuff. Um, one thing Justin always brings up that, that rings a bell to me is, you know, if this is your personal second home, you know all the quirks, right? You know, when you walk out the back door, you have to watch your step because it's that much of a drop down to the patio or, um, you know, the thermostat doesn't really work right at that setting. So you got to kick it up one more notch or, um, you know, that the water heater is, is touchy and 120 degrees is actually 150 degrees, right? It's going to burn skin. <laughs> so, you know, these folks don't know that when they come to your property. So you need to make sure you're doing everything you can to make it as safe as possible. And the biggest issue, um, Injuries happen more to children in vacation rentals, the vacation rentals than they do adults. And that's because when the, uh, you pull up to the, your vacation rental, mom and dad are getting everything out of the car and the kids just run off. They're gone. Right. right. Um, there's been stories of guns being found in vacation rentals that were left by previous guests. 
Wow. Um, children falling off bunk beds or falling off loft ladders within the first five minutes of being a vacation rental and getting seriously injured. Um, so, you know, safety needs to be the first step. You're going you're gonna to get money. <laughs> you're going to find the property. In order to close on that property, you need insurance. So that's when you call me and my team and, and let's get you taken care of there. And then your next thing after closing, you're going to furnish the property. And while you're furnishing it, you might as well go through a safety inspection with Breezeway. Oh, that, you you just info. convinced me to get rid of my bunk beds at one of my places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. No, they're going to clean. Your cleaners will love you. <laughs> yeah, they are yeah. a pain in the neck to yeah. change the sheets. Wow. Yeah. Listen, we grew up with bunk beds. Maybe that's what my problem is now, but I fell off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a, a dear friend of ours who's a, an attorney. Uh, well, she's past the bar. She's not practicing anymore because she made more money on her Airbnbs than she did. Yeah. As a practicing she started attorney. like years ago, but 13 she, years ago. She is uh, very concerned about the liability issue. And when she talks about Airbnbs, uh, stay away from the pools. If you have them, get them filled in Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because she's worried about the liability. Uh, so, so I, I hear you there. You know, uh, some of our most successful clients, I feel like have the most basic, amenities at their property. I mean, it's, yes, it's great proper. We're, we're going to cover the boat, you know, the kayaks and the bicycles and the sauna and the hot tub and the pool and um, fishing equipment for the lake and, and all of that. Awesome. If you, if you have all that, but I mean, I'll be honest, some of these two bedroom condos that maybe were a total investment of 200,000 that are bringing in eight grand a year, Oh yeah. It seemed like a seemed like a pretty good deal to me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. I think people don't realize that it, it doesn't have to be a destination to be successful. Um, all yeah. of ours, with the exception of the two in Florida, they're not destination properties at all. You know, they're they're, you know, dinky little two and three bedroom homes. Most of them are within walking distance to downtown and and we do I do very well with them. Um you know, they're not, they're not sexy because they're not, you know, at the beach or whatever, but um, yeah. it works. It works. The, the thing about short-term rental, uh, it can work most anywhere because people die and people get married. <laughs> so hopefully not you're, in your Airbnb. You're, you're, yeah. But what, what I'm saying <laughs> is families know. get together and if they have any size of, of a family, it's hard to put them all in hotels yeah. and they feel much yeah. more comfortable in a home than they do in a hotel room. And it's a lot cheaper mm -hmm. than yeah. a hotel room. Well, not necessarily anymore, but yeah, yeah. it's well, um, for the space. Yeah. It's um, there. Every, every single state has, has a market, mm -hmm. has a spot where vacation rentals are, are just incredible investment opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, we insure in all 50 states. We have risk in all 50 states. We currently insure north of $7 billion worth of risk across the wow. United States, um, which makes us the largest home insurance program in the world for Lloyd's of London, uh, which is pretty cool when we came into the end of 2021 to find that out. Uh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So people are like, never heard of you. And it's like, well, I get it. We're not, we don't advertise on the TV every day. We don't have to, but I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, we're the largest home insurance program in Lloyd's of London um, in the United States over, over $7 billion worth of risk insured um, wow. written, written over a hundred thousand policies to date. And um, you know, we're, we're not, we're not here to try and, you know, save you the most amount of money when you buy insurance, we're, we're going to save you money when you have to use the policy. Yeah. That's, that's where you're going to get the benefit with, with our program. Um, if you, I mean, honestly, if you're looking to save, cut, trim the fat on your vacation rental and you think that's going to be on the insurance side, like you're, you're going down the wrong, you're, you're thinking about this the wrong way. Okay. Right. Buy some cheaper bits. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, it, you know, find other ways to trim the fat other than insurance. But if you're, everyone's going to shop. So my recommendation to everybody listening, after you secure your money and you start shopping for your property, you have to have insurance to close on the property unless you're going in 100% cash. Um, and even if you're going in all cash, it's still no insurance. But you need you need to ask the right questions. Don't just 
think, don't just go on to Geico's website or Progressive's website and plug in your address. They kick out a two page quote that doesn't say anything about what's actually covered. It's 800 bucks, you click the button and you move on. You need to talk to an agent. You need to ask these questions. You need to explain to them that you're doing short term vacation rentals. You need to ask them if a guest vandalizes my home during their stay, how much coverage do I have? Right. Is it 5,000? Is it 50,000? Is it my limit of insurance? I'm going to offer bicycles. Do I have liability that extends off and away from my property line or not? Or am I only covered for stuff on property? Because then based on what type of insurance policy you have to manage your risk, then you're going to make the, the decisions on what type of amenities and how you're going to set up your vacation rental. Not everybody's going to buy our policy, but I'll tell you what, if you're a lakefront home or for you guys, you're on a canal and you offer kayaks, you cannot have an insurance policy that only covers liability on the property line. Right. Right. It, it serves you guys no purpose. Right. right. So um, you need to think about these. Now I have a condo in Boston on the 10th floor. It's a one bedroom. Like, I don't think I need all of this coverage. I get it. I understand. And maybe our policy is not, not for you. Um, and that's fine. You can go with one of these other options. Just understand what you are and are not covered for. Right. Um, this is, this is completely different than what you've done your entire life, especially if you've been investing in long-term rentals for the last decade, let's say, mm -hmm. and you're ready to jump into vacation rentals. Don't just call your long-term, your agent that's been writing your long-term rental policies and expect to get the best coverage out there. It's just not going to happen. Right. Um, you're going to get a modified landlord policy that's weak on coverage and weak on liability. And the price might seem right, but if you ever have to file a claim, you're going to find out, unfortunately, the hard way that's going to cost a lot more money in the long run than it does save a couple hundred dollars a year. So if somebody needs to uh, get a quote on, uh, obviously, um, if it's not the standard type of a house, they're going to have to talk to somebody. Uh, best way mm -hmm. to uh, reach is with the, the URL, proper insurance? Yeah, our website, www.proper.insure. Um, if you just Google you know, Airbnb insurance will be number one that pops up there um, on the natural page rank. Uh, there's a there's a button right there that says get a quote. You're going to fill in your property details and, and we want to talk to every single person that quotes with us. So you can expect a phone call from an agent within 24 hours in our office um, to talk to you about your property and talk to you about our product and, and answer those questions for you and, and see if this risk management is the best for you, right? Um, there's tons of information on our website too. So feel free to click through, educate yourself, read up on everything. Um, if you live, you can go like to our blog post, our blog, you can check and see if there's specific regulations in your community or your county right on our website when it comes to vacation rentals. So if nice. you're looking at investing in a certain market and you want to see, oh, is it tricky to get a permit? There's a map right there that has. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you can just click on it. It'll take you to a blog post that links you to the regulation. So you can kind of read through and see what you need um, to keep it on theme. Most all of them require insurance. <laughs> most all of them require a million dollar limit of liability. Um, right. and, that, and that all comes stock on our product. So we try awesome. to make it really, really easy for everybody. Um, but yeah, we'll, um, you put your info on our website to get a quote online. You'll get a phone call typically within 24 hours to discuss the property. Um, we like to know who our clients are. We want to talk to you. We're not trying to be ghosts and just send you a number and hope you sign up and we never talk to you. Like that's not how we do business here. So, um, you know, in full disclosure to everybody, we're going to be more expensive. And so just yeah. anticipate if you're looking at a quote from your local agent for $1,500, I'll be honest, we're probably going to be three, right? Yeah. Um, but the coverage is, is, is going to be far superior to anything else on the market. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Thank that kind of reminds me, since we have a canal and a kayak in Florida, do I need to get a alligator bite rider? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no limitation on animal or pet liability. So you're good. <laughs> already, <laughs> already included. <laughs> awesome. Nick, uh, we really appreciate you yeah, coming on and, and discussing this. Um, it's, it's very important information. Uh, Short-term rentals is a, a big deal right mm -hmm. now. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to make sure that people have the proper information. 
I keep yeah, adding a, proper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Correct. it's a different different animal. Um, and there's a reason that the big retail markets and those policies are not exclusively endorsed by Verbo and the Expedia Group. Right, right. They, they simply don't cover this. Um, right. That is an endorsement that, that we're extremely proud to have from Verbo and the Expedia Group as the recommended comprehensive vendor for their clientele. Um, and, and at the end of the day, I mean, we look forward to, to talking to everybody. Um, we hope we can you know, help you find a solution to your risk management and your vacation rental and uh, hope, hope to see you become a proper customer. Awesome. That's, uh, I, I, again, we, we Good certainly stuff. appreciate you coming on and yeah, sharing thanks with us. so much. Um, folks, we have gone past our time, but I wanted to keep going because Good Nick stuff. had some, some great content there. And we have more people viewing. That, that's right. <laughs> so, um, th thanks again, guys, for joining us on the real estate investor show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina capital management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you are interested in borrowing any money from us, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab.